Hello and welcome to our channel, Tech Expert Tutorials. Why would you use Cloud Vision? Well, Google Cloud Vision is a powerful tool that allows developers to easily integrate vision detection features into their application. Azure and AWS have their own image detection services, each with their own strengths and weaknesses. We already covered these in previous videos. In this video, we will cover five different ways you can use the Google Cloud Vision API. You will learn how to detect and extract text, objects, labels, faces, and landmarks. This API has many other items or categories that it can detect. You can find out more on the official Google Vision webpage, link in the description below. We will start by showing you how to set everything up, including Google Cloud account access to the API, creating a Python environment to run the code, using Jupyter Notebooks to display the output, and using VS Code as your IDE for development. First, we will teach you how to detect and extract text using this API. You need to go to your GCP Google Cloud account, and you're going to create the API, under API library. Type in Vision API. Select Cloud Vision API from the list. I've already enabled this earlier. You may need to enable it if this is the first time that you've used this. But then once you enable it, you click on Manage. Mainly you're coming here for the credentials. So you're going to create new credentials. You select the service account. Type in a name and a description. And then you click on create. Once that's done, you want to grant owner access. Then you continue. There's no need to worry about granting user permissions. So you click on done. Then you want to save these credentials to a JSON file on your hard drive. But first you need to add a key. Select the JSON format. And once you click on create, this will save the JSON file on your hard drive. Remember where you stored this file. You will need to reference this location inside the code later. Okay, now we have the Google Vision server set up on the Google Cloud website. Let's cover some code. So this is a Jupyter Notebook. It shows how to use Google Vision and it prints out the results from the service. First thing you need to know is that we will be using the Google Vision SDK package. Here's some instructions on how to set up your environment using Conda. Next, we use the JSON credentials file that we created earlier on the Google Cloud website and stored on our local machine. There's no need to modify this file. Everything's already inside the file that you will need. You just need to create an environment variable that points to it. Next, we have a function called detect text, and this does most of the work. Here we create a vision client. You can see that's a Google Cloud SDK. It's using the image annotator client method. Next, we read the image file that we're going to process. We store the information in a variable called content. Then we use that variable when we run the vision.image function. We save the output of that into an image. This is where we're calling the Google Cloud client, passing in the image using the document text detection function. We take our response and we look at the text annotations from that response. And then we create an empty list. And for every line in the result, we append another entry into the list with some formatting. We have a simple error handler here. And then my function returns the text that was found. We selected this image to use for processing. It is a driver's license, so we just call the detect text function up above using the image path to my image. And then the result is text. Then we display the first item from text. Then we display every item in text line by line. And then we're going to look at the image to see how accurate our OCR was. Okay, go ahead and run this. First, it's reading the image path, detecting the text, Okay, it's finished. It's pretty quick. This actually runs on some very fast SSD hardware with GPUs in Google Cloud. So of the three major cloud services, this one is the fastest. Here's the text that I found, and you can look at the text line by line. It will give you the format of key value pairs. If you need to know date of birth, it will be formatted like this. Mainly, it's looking at the image to figure out what the fields and the values are. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the image and see how accurate we were. So in the image, you can see her name is Sample Janice Ann, and we have Sample Janice Ann in the output. You see the 128, 123 Main Street, Apartment 1, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. All of this information is found in here. There's a few things that I got wrong, like Sertl. I think that's what I found in the logo. That's what it reads here. So when the text is clear, it's very accurate. However, the text is a little bit smaller, or maybe there's an image in the background, or the image is a little bit fuzzy, then it doesn't do as well. But overall, this is 90 to 95% accurate. 
So that's all we needed to show you. I'll save the code repo link in the description below if you want to go ahead and download the code and run this yourself. Now we will teach you how to detect and extract objects using this API. Here is the image we will be using in this video for object detection. This is the Jupyter Notebook that we will be using for this tutorial. First, we need to set up the Python environment. We will use Conda for this. If you are unfamiliar with using Conda and Jupyter Notebook, see our video on Python, Conda, and Jupyter Notebooks to get started. Link in the description below. These are the commands you will need to run to set up the environment. This command will add the environment to the list of kernels you can use within Notebooks. Once you set this up, select a new environment from the Select Kernel button. Now we are ready to run the code. The first cell imports the Python packages or libraries we will be using. Next, we set up the location for our API key credentials file. Then we create a Google Vision API image annotator client. This is how we will access the GCP cloud service. Then we select our image and path using the IO library. We read the image in as a byte type object. Then we create a Cloud Vision image by selecting the image method from the Google Cloud SDK. We feed in the byte array from the image. Now we pass in the image to the object localization method and get a response back from GCP. Next, we extract the annotations from the response. This contains a list of objects that were found and the XY coordinates for each. Then we open the original image using the PIL Python package to add our labels and boxes to. Here, we go through the annotation details for each object and create a list of items found, along with adding text and borders to the original image. We convert the Python list to a pandas data frame. Here is the list of items that were found. And here is the image with the text and borders for each object. The output of the object detection model shows that several objects were found and the score for each. The score is a measure of the confidence that the model has for an individual item. For example, it is very confident that there is a dress in the image with a score of 0 0.906 and less confident that there is a shoe in the image with a score of 0 0.616. The borders on the image look very accurate. They contain the entire object and only the object. A few items are missing as there is a lot of overlap in the objects. This can confuse the model. Keep in mind we are only showing the objects with a high confidence level. The other objects have a lower confidence score, so they were dropped from the results. Label detection is similar to object detection, but is broader and can detect more types of items than the object detection API does. Also, it does not provide border information to detect where the object is located on the image. This is the image we will be using in this video for label detection. There are a lot of items to be labeled. As usual, we need to set up the Python environment for our notebook. We will be using Conda for this. These are the commands you will need to run to set up the environment. This command will add the environment to the list of kernels you can use within notebooks. Once you set this up, select the new environment from the select kernel button. The first cell imports the Python packages or libraries we will be using. Next, we set up the location for our API key credentials file. Then we select and set up our image path. Now we create a Google Vision API image annotator client. This is how we will access the GCP cloud service. Using the IO library, we read the image in as a byte type object. Now we create a new image class. Then we create a Cloud Vision image by selecting the image method from the Google Cloud SDK. We feed in the byte array from the image. Now we pass in the image to the client using the label detection class and get a response back from Google Cloud Vision service. The default is to return up to 10 labels. You can modify that by using the max results parameter. Next, we extract the label annotations from the response. This contains a list of labels for items that were found, along with a score for each. The score is a measure of the confidence that the model has for an individual item. For example, it is very confident that there is a tire in the image with a score of 0.957, and less confident that there is something related to electricity in the image with a score of 0.838. Here we go through the annotation details for each label and show the items found. Finally, we have an error handler to help debug issues that may occur in this API call. The output of the label detection model shows that several items were found. A few items are missing as there is a lot of overlap in the objects and they are crowded together. This can make it harder for the model to label these correctly. Next, we will teach you how to detect faces. Here is the image we will be using in this video for facial detection. Facial detection can be used for controlling access and security, health, attendance, and customer experience, for example. These are the commands to set up the environment with the necessary packages. 
including the Google Cloud SDK and the Python Imaging Library, PIL. This command will add the new environment to the list of kernels that you can use within notebooks. Once you set this up, select the new environment from the Select Kernel button. The first cell imports the Python packages or libraries we will be using, including a local package we created named Pillow Library Faces. This is what that library contains. This is used for drawing borders and labeling each face on the original image. Next, we set up the location for our API key credentials file. Then we select the file we will be using for this example. Next, we create a new Google Vision API image annotator client to access the GCP cloud service. We open a file and read the contents into the content variable. Then we create a new Cloud Vision image class from the Google Cloud SDK. Now we pass in the image to the client using the face detection function and get a response back from Google Cloud Vision service. Next, we extract the annotations from the response. The annotations contain some metadata about the images, such as the location of each face found and some emotional likelihood. This is trying to label the facial expression for each face. Here we compile a tuple variable containing the likelihood scale for emotional expressions on a face. We open the original image, then we add the borders, a label, and a confidence score for each face. The confidence score is between 0 and 1, with the higher score meaning we are more confident in our analysis result. In this case, that what we detected was a face. We open the image and show the results. Most of these are smiling, so the joy emotion has a higher score, except Taylor Swift. She's not showing any emotion, and the results show this. All likelihoods are labeled as very unlikely. Also notice Will Smith is only smiling a little, and his likelihood result is likely. And finally, we include an error handler to help debug any issues with this code. In this case, there are no errors. So the output of the facial detection model shows good results for detecting a face and an emotional images. There are many use cases for detecting emotion, like sentiment analysis, such as performing market research, or customer experience. Does an individual look happy with a product or salesperson? Here is the image we will be using in this video for landmark detection. Okay, as usual, we need to set up the Python environment for our notebook. We will be using Conda for this. These are the commands to set up the environment with the necessary packages, including the Google Cloud SDK. This command will add the new environment to the list of kernels that you can use within notebooks. Once you set this up, select a new environment from the Select Kernel button. The first cell imports the Python packages or libraries we will be using. Next, we set up a location for our API key credentials file. Then we create a new Google Vision API image annotator client. This is how we will access the GPC cloud service. Now, we create a new Cloud Vision image class from the Google Cloud SDK. Then we select our online image and URL. Now we pass in the image to the client using the landmark detection function and get a response back from Google's Cloud Vision service. Next, we extract the annotations from the response. The annotations contain some metadata about the image, such as the name, the borders of the landmark in the image, and the geographical location of the landmark. Here we print a list of landmarks that were found and the latitude longitude coordinates for each. In our case, there is only one landmark in the results, the Eiffel Tower. This is a Google map link to the map location that corresponds to the landmark. And finally, we include an error handler to help debug any issues with this code. So, the output of the landmark detection model correctly shows that the Eiffel Tower is in our image, with a confidence score of 0 0.409. This number will be in the range between 0 and 1, with a higher score meaning a higher confidence level. 0.4 seems low, but may be due to the copies that were built in other cities, such as Las Vegas and Tokyo. In this video, we have discussed several different items that you can extract from images using the Google Cloud Vision API. Each function or model is optimized to extract a different type of item, with high accuracy. Thank you for watching our video. See you next time.